Hello, geeks. Welcome to the officially unofficial geek channel weekly comic roundup. I am your host, as always, Carrie Quinn, and here this is our weekly comic roundup. And uh, so, lots to talk about today. So let's just get into it. All right. So, um, as always, uh, we try to stay as spoiler free as possible. But I let a few nuggets in. You know, obviously, I'm not going to give away major components to the story. That's just not how I roll. So, I like to give you guys a little bit of a taste and then flow and not tell you too much. So, wow, I've got, I got makeup on my shirt. That's fun. All right, anyways, so let's get really right into it. All right, so... This week, we had uh, first to talk about Wonder Woman 775. Okay, so we're continuing uh, the other worlds uh, kind of uh, after world, after life uh, jumping. Um, so I was really kind of hoping that they'd start speeding this stuff along. Um, a concept that I was really liking in the beginning, I'm starting to get bored with. Ah, oh, I hate that. I hate when I'm starting to get bored with something because we're not moving it along. Okay, so I was really, there's not a lot of action in this one, um, which is fine. Sometimes you have comics that don't have action, but you want to have something intriguing enough to keep your interests and... So I was really hoping for a Wonder Woman Janice fight, but sadly, not a thing in the story. Um, she keeps working with her little squirrel buddy um, from Asgard and Dead Man to free the Olympus gods, which, you know, you have to see if she is successful on this. Um, so, yeah, there's not really a lot to talk about in this one. I, I, like I said, it's getting to the point where it's like, can we move can we move this stuff along? Because, well, I have a feeling I know where the story's going eventually. And it's just like, okay, can we, can we get there? And it just seems like even by the end of the issue, there was a lot of, okay, so um, no resolution today no resolution this month and it's just going to keep on going in this whole idea of um diana slash wonder woman going around to different other world uh like afterlife uh type situations god my hair is okay so like those of you that follow me on facebook um know that my hair has been an issue lately Oh my god, it is totally sticking up. Okay, all right. Ah. Um, okay, there we go. Yeah, there we go. All right. So that's Wonder Woman for you, Wonder Woman 775. Please, can I get a fight next week with Janice and end this crap? Okay. I won't say it's crap. You know what? I shouldn't say it's crap. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, can we move this along? It was great in the beginning, and now I'm getting bored. Okay, so the next one we're going to talk about today is the Joker issue 5. I got this lovely, lovely cover. I'm really loving this one, the variants. Um, so... This is interesting art style, um, not the typical art style. I believe it is a uh, guest artist on this one. And there's my hair sticking up again. Uh, okay, guys, we're just going to deal with it. Um, so I'm not sure how I feel about the artistic style. Um, since it's a guest star, no biggie. Um, it was kind of interesting, kind of old school, you know, mixed with not so old school. So it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, but, you know, here's the thing with the story. Okay, so like an old friend of mine um, told me a few times uh, before he passed that a hero is somebody who 
did something stupid and got lucky. And I think um, that whole concept is really funny here considering uh, the beginning of this issue. So, all right, this is kind of one of those filler issues um, where um, it's basically, it's, it's previous to what is going on now. So you're seeing uh, Commissioner and everyone from the past. I mean, you got to the point where Harvey Dent is not Two-Faced yet. And um, so that's interesting. Um, the thing is, is what you have to wonder is like, is it a filler issue or is it one of those things that kind of is there to give us a little bit of a a little bit of a, a, a clue as to how this thing is going to end. Like there's, there is a major part of me that has a lot of um, theories on, in regards to this, uh, this run, um, this comic run. Um, I have theories. I have theories. And on one hand, if it's, if it's a filler issue, um, it means nothing, but if it actually is giving us clues to what a possible outcome of this whole situation is, then it's not a filler issue. Um, I have to feel that it has to give us a little bit of an idea on the mindset between the two characters of Jim Gordon and the Joker in this whole situation. Um, it's not necessarily black and white. It's probably a little bit more gray. Um, so that's something that, that, that's something that, that you get from this. So it's just, you know, it's really kind of the whole, you know, Jim Gordon doesn't let things go. He doesn't, um, he doesn't, move on from things very easily and the Joker is one of those major things that he has not moved on from and it's become obvious and so really interesting um, interactions especially between the Commissioner and uh, Harvey Dent and the Commissioner and the Joker like I said it could either be Something like, oh, look, these guys really, you know, have been at this several years now. Um, or it could be something where it gives us a clue as to outcomes down the road, um, per se. But, you know, until we actually see it, it's all just speculation, you know. And um, so, yeah, so Commissioner Gordon... Um, shows this thing uh, where Commissioner Gordon makes this really, it's unrelated to the Joker, he makes this really daring but kind of stupid move, um, as, as Harvey Dent calls it, and um, he basically saves the day. And so that's kind of why I thought of that quote from one of my friends. Uh, if you, a hero is somebody that did something stupid and got lucky. Um, <laughs> Wow. So, and stupid doesn't necessarily mean stupid. Stupid is just basically necessarily means not acting in one's best interest in that kind of idea. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So, moving on to the next comic, um, we're going to talk about Batman the Detective. Uh, this is the uh, limited series. This is issue four out of six. And it was really good. So now we're starting to get into things um, for the week that I was really actually really enjoying. And this is one of them. Um, so Bruce has been arrested. He is in France and he's being questioned. And soon it becomes apparent that the equilibrium um, the, is the, the ones doing the, the issue, the asking and attempting to kill him. Um, so if you remember, this is the group that is going around, um, finding all the people that Batman has saved, uh, and killing them to, uh, you know, as it's called equilibrium, they want to equal, you know, even out the score and 
oh, they're so fucking evil. Okay, and you remember, these are the people that in the last issue uh, almost killed the card. Um, so, yeah. So, Squire shows up uh, and helps, helps him, and Batman decides that after he gets free... Um, from the questioners, the, the, the interrogators, questioners, the interrogators that um, try to kill him, uh, <laughs> he uh, shows up with, you know, he should, he, so Squire, excuse me, shows up and helps him, um, and Batman decides that in order to keep everyone he's ever saved alive, they needed to activate the Batman Alliance in Europe. The Batman Alliance in Europe. Wow. Okay, so there's an alliance. There's a Bat Family extension in Europe, apparently. Uh, and so I'm assuming in the next episode, we're going to meet these people. Um, next episode, next issue, we're going to be meeting these people and it's going to be, you know, pretty interesting and we're going to move forward from there. Um, just kind of really what's funny is like, there's, there's like, I wonder if some of these creators and these writers talk to each other because there's different things, um, different, uh, uh, procedure and, uh, and, uh, um, practices that Bruce Wayne and Batman have that they're displaying in, in, in a couple books, uh, this week. So, uh, there's this idea of Batman um, actually not being, excuse me, Bruce, actually not being too upset that he's been taken in for questioning because sometimes you have to, he's like, sometimes you have to put yourself in that position to find all the answers. So that's why he's not so upset at first that he's been taken in because at first he thinks it's it's the cops. So um there's some things in this that are, are, are news and you find out about them and they're really good and you got to check out the issue to find those things out. Um, so, toodles on that one. Okay, so the next one that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about another limited series. It's Infinite Frontier. Um, it is issue two of six. Okay, so interesting. All right. So here um, we are doing that whole jumping in on different worlds in the multiverse uh, thing still. Cameron, whom I believe is CIA or FBI, um, she is investigating what happened on main Earth. Um, and the Justice League is being cryptic as always because they think that they can handle everything on their own. And the problem is, is that you have a public that on, on multiple universes of the multiverse that is now completely aware because of what happened in death metal. They're aware of the fact they're aware of the multiverse. So and this is something that you read about. If you read the first issue in this series, you're aware that the people, the population as a whole are aware now, <clears throat> excuse me, of the multiverse. And that's a problem. Because now some people, because they don't understand it, they are scared by it. Um, so it's not enough for the Justice League to, in, in her eyes and, and in the government's eyes, it's not simply enough for the Justice League just to be like, hey guys, we handled it. The problem is, is they don't have enough information. They're not giving enough information either way to make people not be scared than the general public. Because, well, I mean, I would think that that might be a little bit scary, you know? That might be a little bit scary thinking that there could be, you know, have, it's one thing to have a theory and it's a total other thing to have an idea and then it's a total other thing to have a fact. Um, so these people now know that as it comes to the multiverse in DC, that the multiverse is a fact. It's no longer a theory. It's no longer an idea. It's a fact. So it's a lot, there's a big difference between those, those two ideas, theory and fact, and there's no theory anymore when it comes to that. And fact has made it really too real, it seems, for people. So, um, let's see here. Um, so she's going elsewhere for more help. Um, 
On another Earth, President Superman and Thomas Wayne are moving around to Earths, different Earths, um, to find someone they believe to be reformed, but now he, they are attacking them. So you're going to have to read the book. I'm not going to reveal who it is, um, but President Superman, Thomas Wayne, go to different types of Earths and, and run into someone. And they thought this person was nice, but they're not anymore. So they're trying to figure out, well, what happened here? Because this is odd. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to bring this now. There's other stories in there uh, that um, weren't as interesting as this next one. And I'm bringing y'all to Roy Harper. Okay. So if you remember the last uh, issue of this limited series, I was basically sitting there saying, can somebody throw a sinking bone to Roy Harper? Freaking Arsenal has been through enough. Can we help him? The well, thing is, is, okay, so Roy Harper is figuring shit out with his new power ring and uh, <clears throat> he's trying to figure out what it all means. And the thing is, is uh, I gotta tell you, I don't think he understands um, what it means to be a Black Lantern. I, I don't think he completely gets it. Um, and it's weird because he's he's uh he's equating the idea of being a black lantern with being a lantern the way he understands being a lantern to be. And the thing is, is his only experience dealing with lanterns has been through the various Green Lanterns that have been in the Justice League. So it's 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 a it's a it's a wonder what's going to happen here because he does not get it because he's equating it with being a green lantern and obviously if you know anything about black lanterns they are not like green lanterns so what is going to happen there oof we're going to have to wait and find out now <laughs> something big is happening across all these multiverses and all the realities are leading to one thing. And if you've been paying attention, you know what that one thing is. It's bad. So I'm not going to give it away because it's happening across <coughs> different universes, different Earths of the multiverse. All this stuff is coming through. This one particular thing is coming through. And you get it. In this issue, you've got to read it. I'm not going to tell you, like I said. I don't give everything away, guys. I don't. But we're getting closer and closer to something big, I think. And it's going to be big, big. <clears throat> so that's one to watch out for. I'm, I'm really interested, and I have theories, again, um, just like I have theories about the Joker. I have theories about what's going on with Roy. Um... Now, keeping myself, I think I might do a separate video about some of these ideas that I'm having, but I, I haven't decided if I'm going to or not. So we'll see. <laughs> Watch this space. It might happen. Okay, so the next one that we're going to be talking about is, since we're moving right along, we're going to be talking about Justice League Last Ride number three. Okay, so you have really cool little campfire scene here and you have like um dark side looming over them and it's um yeah you know chip sadarsky is like all over everywhere lately he's writing current issues for marvel current issues besides this uh, current stories for dc as well so he is all over And he seems to be killing it no matter where he goes and what he's writing. So <clears throat> keep a lookout for this guy. Um, I know major comic fans already are looking at Chip Zdarsky and, and just marveling in what he does. Um, me being one of them. Um, so Justice League Last Ride, let's talk about that one in particular. Um, in this other universe tale, um, our intrepid and yet conflicted uh, heroes have made it to Arcopla, uh, Archalypse, 
with their prisoner, excuse me, Lobo. Lobo! Don't, we do get quite a bit of Lobo in this, uh, this issue, but, um, it seems like even though he does have some zingers in there, it's still kind of low-key, low-key Lobo, um, but Batman is having this dream. He's actually dreaming, um, where, uh, Martian Manhunter is, is warning him about certain things, and, um, the Green Lantern is like, yeah, so, like, this stuff is happening, um, and it's not great, and the Lanterns are all, you know, up in arms and everything like that, so, um, everyone just kind of, like, picks a post and they go to it, and they're, they're, you know, hanging out and everything, and so, <clears throat> Superman kind of, um, puts himself in a position where even though he's teamed up with the Flash, he gets to be kind of alone. Um, and I'm not going to tell you exactly why they're all up in arms and worried. I'm going to let you guys uh, find that out and figure that out as well um, by reading it. Um, but there's this really wonderful moment. And I have been really getting very happy with um, and getting really into anything involving like Superman or... or um, that kind of thing, because some of the, the stuff that gets attached to Superman lately is really kind of complex. And so there's this moment where um, he's, you if you recall, if you've read the first two issues of this one, you recall that Superman is dreaming <clears throat> and he doesn't like it because he's having nightmares. And... Uh, so he's not really doing so great. He's kind of upset. He's kind of depressed. Not everything is working out very well right now for Superman. Um, so he calls Lois and, and <clears throat> he's trying to put on that whole brave face, that stiff upper lift kind of thing. And it's not working. And, and basically, um, she was just like, you know what? It's okay to not be okay. You don't have to be Superman all the time. You cannot be you know, Superman all the time. You have to allow yourself to be who you are. Um, but yes, yeah, it's Superman. But yeah, it's also Clark Kent. So um, this there's this whole it's okay to not be okay thing, which I loved. I love that about this issue. Uh, the, 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 the tiff and the confliction between uh, Batman and Superman, um, I'm really hoping that they kind of let that go soon, but really, it is part of the, the, the movement of the story also, so I don't know. Um, so the next one we're gonna talk about is, uh, Detective Comics 1039. Yes, oh my goodness, okay. So, I echo Huntress when uh, she asks exactly how many times Worth can freaking blow up Gotham. Um, so, epic fight continues between Bats and Worth, part three, four thousand. Uh, like, seriously, you know, nobody, nobody is really keeping track anymore. Because um, this guy keeps on coming, keeps on coming, keeps on coming. Um, like, seriously, though, this dude doesn't give up. And... Uh, now he's trying to include Deb Donovan in this stuff. Like, excuse me? Like, okay. Look, I get Deb. Okay? Reporter that's kind of disgruntled by Gotham's elite. Uh, getting everything they want. Constantly patting each other on the back. She's got to go to places and interview them. And and she's just really annoyed by him. And, and, and like Deb, I always think having to interact with shallow people is always a lot easier when there's food. So I see you, Deb Donovan. I see you. I see you. I am you. Okay. Anyway, after, even after, um, a tango with Vile, um, and his icky parasite, uh, both Deb and the Huntress are on the men and Batman has got an interesting idea, an interesting plan to figure out what's going on. And, um, Let's test that theory, Bruce. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck with that one. So, 
we'll see what happens there. His, his interesting theory on exactly how he's going to handle things and figure out what's going on, which is really funny because, yeah. I don't know how that's going to work out for him necessarily. So, yeah. But Deb Donovan, see you. I see you, Deb. I see you. Yeah. I, too, motivated by food. Anyways, and if you're wondering what I'm talking about involving Deb Donovan, if you read um, Detective Comics and you're like, Deb Donovan doesn't talk about food once, she's, you know, whatever. But, okay, here's, here's the thing. Um, there was a little mini uh, story attached to one of the Detective Comics recently. It was about Deb going to an event and um, she had to interact with all these snooty, shallow, uh, rich people. And really, she's just like, you know what? Here's, here's the wine. Here's the fucking food. I, okay, I'll deal with this, you know? Um, that's kind of where I get the idea of Deb Donovan from because, like, I, I just, I, I get it. I get it. So, uh, next we are, we're moving on down the line here, and I'm going to talk to you about Future State Gotham number th three. Yes, number three. Holy shit. Okay, guys. What the hell? Okay. Um, yes, Future State Gotham. Prison break at Blackgate. We started seeing uh, stuff about this in the last issue. <clears throat> so, this is not you know, new, all right? So, both Red Hood, uh, Jason Todd as Peacekeeper Red, okay, and uh, Batman Fox style um, are stuck in the middle of all this. They, they came to Blackgate Penitentiary both with the same... Um, the, the, the same uh, 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 goal. Yeah, the same goal. So, um, okay, so it's prison break, break, uh, prison break at Blackgate, and Jason and ba Batman, Fox style, um, are stuck in the middle. Um, Warmonger um, overpowers both of them and tosses them into a pit, drugged into thinking uh, that they want to fight each other. Uh, it can only, that can, that's, that's only, that, that, no, that's only part of it, guys, okay? It's only part of it. Like, so, if you were wondering if Future State was just gonna be about Jason Todd doing his thing, um, and talking to, um, Bruce Wayne, whom everyone thinks is dead, uh, you got, it, if you were thinking it was gonna be just about that, it's not. Thankfully, we are get a little bit of a reprieve uh, coming up, I think, in regards to the Jason Todd story. Not that I think that the Jason Todd story is not compelling and good stuff, but it's, you know, it's going to break it up a little bit in, in the scheme of things. Because Future State Gotham is not going to be just about Jason doing his spy work for Bruce. Because um, we have... We have a special guest that steals the motherfucking show, okay? Wow. All right. I'm not going to tell you who that is. That's some big information. That's some big information. And I can't tell you who the special guest is. Sorry. You're going to have to read the book, okay? Um, so, wait. There are two special guests. Let's be real about this. Two special guests. And it's really cool, and I'm really excited, and you have to read it to find out. So read Gotham, excuse me, Future State Gotham number three, and get it all the way to the end, because... Let's just say I'm a happy camper. Yeah. Alrighty, so, you know, but I can't wait. You know, um, soon we're gonna have to see the, uh... The, 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 the new, the, we, we're going to have to wait and we're going to have to see the showdown, um, between Peacekeeper Red and, uh, Batman Fox style. Um, 
But that's not the only showdown we're going to see. <laughs> we're going to see another showdown. And the end of the issue, really, oh my god, I, you know what, I'm not telling you guys. I wish I could. I'm not going to. I'm going to give you something to have to check out the book for because, well, it's worth it. I assure you. It, it's, it's definitely, definitely worth it. Um, so, moving on, we have two more to talk about. Um, and so... As you know, the last issue that I talk about is always my issue of the week. So, and like last week, we we really had a hard time. I really had a hard time talking about and figuring out which one was going to be my issue of the week. Like, which one? Um, there's two. Like, there's a lot of strong stuff here. Okay. Um, but there are two in particular, like last week, very strong books that I had a hard time choosing between. Um, really, it, it could also be like there's three. There's three really hard books to choose between. Because if you want to include Future State Gotham on that one, you could. Mostly um, for reasons that I couldn't tell you guys about. Because um, I'm not going to spoil the whole thing for y'all. Just... A little bit, like I said. Um, but the next one, the next to last comic that I'm talking about today is the Superman Action Comics 2021 Annual. Damn, holy shit, that was good, Jeebs. Holy shit. Okay, no, okay, so here's, here, full disclosure, I did not read any of the future state Superman titles, so... I had to do a couple Google searches, okay? I had to. Um, <clears throat> but I will be picking up that trade. Um, I believe, if I understand correctly from my Google searches, that all the Superman-related future state things happen to be in one volume um, for the trade. So I'm going to be picking up the trade for that because it does look really good. Um, but... Regardless of this, this story does have enough information and is strong enough on its own uh, to stand on its own um, either way. Uh, so, but knowing a little bit about the timeline helps. So, I'm going to help you because that's just, I'm a peach. I'm a peach. I may not look like a piece of fruit, but I am. So... Hmm. Timeline. All right. So, <clears throat> trying to nutshell this for y'all, even though I'm a peach still, even if I nutshell it. Okay. Um, so this annual has group of, uh, children, not children, um, young adults, adults. Okay. And they're all gathered. Or excuse me. No, let's, let's back up a little bit. Let's talk about this. Um, so this annual has a group of children and they're all gathered around this old man on war world. Um, and they are hiding from people and the old guy is going to tell them, uh, a story about the house of L. Um, okay. So house of L takes place a few centuries in the future from the events currently going on in action comics and Superman's main story. So like it's a few centuries down, down the line. Okay, um, so all the people that you're seeing, with the exception of Kara and Henshaw, are direct descendants of Kal-El, aka Superman Prime. So, um, Superman, Superman, okay, Kal-El, Clark Kent. Um, so the story is about these descendants, um, one of them is getting married to this big warrior dude, and he wants to take the name of uh, L. Um, and just when they were about ready to have a friendly sparring match between Brandon Kent, uh, a descendant of, of uh, Superman and Jonathan Kent, um, and at that time, um, the reigning Superman, uh, so, okay, so they're going to have a friendly sparring match as part of the wedding, um, festivities between Brandon Kent and the groom 
Um, what what are the what are they Scottish Highlanders or something? Okay, so <laughs> friendly sparring match. It makes me think of the the time in Doctor Who um, when Strax uh, used his uh, his days off, his weekends off, to go to Glasgow, um, and he gets into bar fights with these big Scottish Highlanders, and 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 he's just like. You know, I will defeat you for the glory of the Suntaran Empire. Okay, anyways, uh, Doctor Who moment aside. Um, so I just think, like, the idea, you know, what are these people, Highlanders? Um, anyways, then Pyros comes in and decides he's going to banish most of them to the Phantom world, and they spend a lot of time trying to get their asses out. Uh, meanwhile, Pyros is uh, hanging out with Kara, and Kara's in a cage, and um, he's redecorating. Uh huh. He's redecorating their their spot. Um, it's gonna happen. Um, well, obviously he's not gonna get away with it, right? So you have to read the book to find out who they encounter in the Phantom World and how they get out, because it's good. It really is, or else. It wouldn't be my next to last book. Moving on to the moment. Well, like, you know, if you're really into this, that you've been waiting for. Let me take a drink of water first. My hair. Oh my god, my hair is so weird. Um, so, the comic of the week for this week is Batman Urban Legends number five. Come on, did you did you did you not think it was gonna be Urban Legends? Did you like Of course you did. Of course you knew. Of course you knew. Okay, so um Jason Todd and Grifter are, are like my comic book boyfriends here because um I like smart ass, sassy bad boy types. Uh, what can I say? I, I, I have a type. <sighs> Anyway, <clears throat> Mr. Red Hood has to try to save Batman because Freeze and Cheer have him. That's not a good position to be in. Um, and he claims that he's going to figure all this out his way. And he ends up, what ends up happening is you're sitting there and you're like, okay, he's just like, I'm going to do this my way. Okay, I'm going to do this my way. And then he ends up doing it exactly the way Batman would do it. So, how far does he get? What does he find out? Read the book. Okay. Um, the Batgirl story was cute, but really was not thrilling and an overall disappointment to me. Um, what I would like to see is the Batgirls and, and all that getting some actual action, uh, some uh, comic book detective stuff that you know, the kind of stuff that you're seeing with the Tim Drake story that happens after that in the book and what's happening with the Red Hood story. I would like to see some real hardcore detective crime fighting coming from the bad girls. Um, and we're not getting that in this story. And I believe it's a one shot. So it's not like we're going to have to assail ourselves with it for a number of weeks or excuse me, a number of months to come. But still... I would love to see something more out of them than just these little cutesy tales. Sorry. Yeah. That's how it is. But all of that aside, you have the Tim Drake story. It's a great addition uh, to this set of stories, to this anthology. Um, he seems to have infiltrated the cult um, that's taking people, and some stuff happens with that. Um, and it looks kind of big. It looks like like this cult kind of borrows from different uh, mythology and different societies. And it's kind of interesting how like the, the little picking of different societies kind of works out into uh, building this cult. It's basically a cult. Um, so you're going to have to take a look at that. Um, but... Okay, so I really loved, I liked, I liked the Tim Drake story. Um, it's mostly disappointing, the Batgirl story, but 
the the reason why urban legends number five is my comment of the week one has to do with the jason todd story because it's really kind of one of those things where it's like you see kind of why when um You see why, kind of, why um, Bruce has entrusted this whole thing going on between the two of them in Future State to Jason Todd. You find, I think it's, it's really great because it's like, you are really in truly finding out why Batman has chosen him, why Bruce Batman has chosen him to be the person that is 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 doing this this work this spy work um, and that's kind of really cool how to take this story another one it, another Chip Zdarsky and 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 have it connect in in a progression of not just in this issue but in a progression um, of a greater balance and a greater, um, a greater balance in their relationship and, and a greater reverence between the two of them in each other's abilities and, and strengths, which is really great. Okay, but what can you say that hasn't been said or that I haven't said about Grifter though? Um, Grifter, if you don't know much about him, uh, Grifter comes from an old um, image comic book run written by Jim Lee. Now, if you're watching this video, if you have any idea um, about comic books, especially DC comic books, enough that you find yourself watching this video, you probably know the name Jim Lee. So, I don't think I need to explain that to y'all. Anywho... So, Grifter comes from an old uh, image comic that was written um, by Jim Lee called Wildcats. <clears throat> now, when Jim Lee, uh, and, and you can check this all out on, on Wikipedia, and there's stuff online that kind of tells about this progression. When Jim Lee finally comes over to DC, um, it seems like, if I'm understanding correctly, he, not Image Comics, actually owns the likeness and the story of Wildcats. So recently, uh, Jim Lee started, you know, not Jim Lee, but DC as a, ho uh, as a, as a whole started telling these tales, especially in urban legends about Grifter. Now there's tales also in the future state comics. They are the second tales, like the, the, the add on tales of the dark detective series. Very good, very good. Um, so there's so much that happens. So Grifter is dealing with the fact that that he um, fucked up in the last issue, um, and so he is quote unquote fired from his position working with um, and uh, keeping Lucius Fox, Lucius Fox safe. Um, but he's just like, okay, so there's a lot of shit going on and, um, he's got to figure out what he is doing, how he's going to do it and, um, how he's going to do it and keep from getting killed basically. So, um, <clears throat> what Grifter does really well is he does, um, uh, bend the truth a little bit well and, ends up getting himself in a position where he can still complete what he needs to do. And, and, and the major question that happens throughout this whole issue series, and this was, this was the end of the Grifter tale as it come, as it has to do with the urban legends series. Um, so the question has been throughout all of these parts of the, uh, of this, uh, tale, Exactly whose side and who is Grifter working for? Is he working for one or the other or more than one and is a double agent? Um, 
you get your answer uh, in in this issue. You get your answer, um, and it's it's kind of twists and turns, and uh, it's really great. And at the end of it, um, you get the idea based on the way it's presented that he will be back. And I'm not going to tell you um, who he's uh, loyal to why he's been doing what he's been doing because that gives away a major piece of information you have to just go ahead and read the book because holy shit both hit the that before both that story and the jason todd story um and the interactions and, and everything like we have one more part uh to the jason todd um, cheer drops story and that's going to be obviously next month uh, the grifter story is complete and we have more to come involving the Tim Drake story and I've looked ahead some of the previews um, that I found online we got a lot of really great stuff coming for that comic uh, series alone some really great shit coming for that comic series I, I'm really excited to see what happens with that so that is the, that's my comics for this week. Okay, so I won't keep you guys very much longer. Um, I'm working on some other stuff for the channel. So please make sure to do all the YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, uh, click the notification button so that you know when I post again. Um, I, you know, also, also, also go to the Facebook, go to the Facebook. God damn. What am I? Jesus Christ. Okay. Go to Facebook and uh, like and follow our Facebook page as well. I'm going to have the path to get to it down below in the description. Please, like I said, do all those things and keep up with us so that you know when we post stuff. And, and I talk about other stuff on Facebook as well. You can also follow me on Twitter at Carrie Q Author. Um, I'm on there uh, a little bit and uh, posting a little bit here and there. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, obviously, you know, keep uh, uh, shopping your local comic book shops. Keep taking care of each other and yourselves and make time to read every day. Do it because it's fun and because it's for you. So one thing you get to do for you every day, if you read every day, whether it's a comic or a book or a newspaper or articles online, who the fuck cares? Just read. It's one thing that you truly get to do for yourself every day. And um, anyways, so that's it for the officially unofficial geek channels weekly comic roundup. And I am always your host right here with the crazy hair pointing up for no reason. I'm Carrie Quinn, and I'll be seeing ya. Bye!